With Chaos 3.0, I'll be using more pin blanks than I've ever used before and more varieties of wood than I've ever used before. And I'll also be placing veneers between the glue ups to really make these blanks pop. I've got all of my blanks dimensioned on two sides and I marked each of those sides just with a pencil. And the idea is one flat side will sit against the table and the other flat side will allow me to have a nice tight fit for my glue up. I don't want to have any gaps between, between the glue ups. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the ends squared on all of these blanks. We'll just run them to the table saw, square the ends off. Uh, that way we can offset them and start our glue up. I've just been laying my blanks out trying to get a nice looking pattern. Uh, everything is going to be glued up two by two by two and then we'll joint those and glue them together until we get a full blank. You can see this one's going to be much larger than any of the others I've made. I've got another section back here that wouldn't even fit on the, uh, on the table. And I've got a bunch of just odd blanks back there. And what I think I'm going to do, those are lighter colors. I'm going to kind of step back, look at this from a distance. Like for example, there's not a lot of light colors in this blank, so I probably will pull one and replace one just to kind of get that contrast in there. And as we get them glued up, we'll square the ends off and the pieces we cut off of the ends will become the pieces that fill in these, these gaps that you see uh, to where they're not exactly the same length. So this is, this is going to be a beautiful blank. I just finished my first round of glue ups. And I've got nine blanks that are made up of multiple blanks glued side by side. Next step would be to joint one side of each of these blanks so that they can be joined together. Once I joint those sides right before I glue them, I want to be able to square my blanks. So we're going to go ahead and square the left side of the blank and we're going to use these cutoffs to fill in the right side of the blank so we can square it. So our entire blank will be a nice symmetrical rectangle before we start making any of our angled cuts. I've jointed one side of each section so that these two can go together, these two, these two, so on and so on. I also squared up the left hand side. Before I glue these together, I'm going to go ahead and get the cutoff pieces from the left glued into the right and then we'll square the right hand side up so we've got a nice symmetrical blank. Here's a quick shot of the final glue up on our blank. Once the glue is completely dry, I'll cut the diagonals, mix everything up, glue it back together and that will create the chaotic effect that we're looking for. I really like this blank because I used a number of exotics in it and I think the colors are just going to explode once we mix everything up. I let the glue dry overnight on my blank and I have to say I could not be happier with how it turned out. I think it's absolutely stunning. I'm going to start this process by squaring up all four sides, then we'll pick an angle. I'll get my sled set to that angle and we'll start cutting slices off of the main blank. I just finished cutting the blank and I wanted to give you one last look before we start shuffling all the pieces around. I've gone ahead and shuffled all the pieces and I tried really hard to keep two edges of the blank straight, but I'll be honest with you, I could see myself kind of adjusting a little bit to where I'm like halfway between uh, on each of the uh, glue ups. And I think that might make it a little more interesting, you know, if we break it up like that. So I do believe I'll go ahead and shift it back and forth. Then we'll get this all glued up and we'll come back and cut 45 in the opposite direction. I'm going to cut some veneer strips that I'll be gluing between my blanks. Uh, I just took a blank that is it's just shy of three quarters of an inch wide and I just sort of used it to make some, some rough lines here so I kind of knew where to cut. I'm just going to take a ruler. Uh, we'll lay it on here. This veneer cuts super easy. Uh, we'll just grab a razor blade. This is one of those self-healing mats so I can cut on it with no issue. And now we've got a nice strip of veneer that we can glue uh, between our between our segments of our blank. I apologize for the noise, but it is a little over 100 degrees in the shop, so I have a portable air conditioner running as well as an air filtration system because I do not intend to open the garage door tonight and let that heat back into the shop. My blank has been glued up. I'm going to go ahead and square one side. That will allow me to lay it against the fence. I'll turn the fence to 45 degrees and we'll begin slicing off sections in the opposite direction of the diagonals we have here. Once that's done, 
we'll get the blank glued up and we should have a very chaotic pattern to cut into individual pin blanks. I just finished cutting this blank. You can see the kerf marks where I made all of my 45s at the opposite direction of the previous 45s. What we're gonna do now is mix these all up and we're gonna start gluing them back together and very soon we will have a finished chaos blank that we can cut into individual pin blanks. This chaos three blank has had overnight to dry. It looks fantastic. I'm ready to go ahead now and start cutting it into pin blanks. Now, once again, it is miserably hot outside and I'm not gonna open the door. Uh, we're gonna start by squaring up. You'll notice, let me show you real quick. The grain runs this away through the whole blank. So we're gonna start by squaring up this end, which will allow us to place it flush against the, uh, the backstop. We'll knock our blanks off until we get to the corner where it starts to slant. Then we'll flip it around, we'll square off this end, and we'll begin to cut our blanks uh, the other direction. I wanted to give you one last look at the blank. I just finished cutting it into three quarter inch strips. I'm ready now to go make some five inch blanks out of these strips. Here's a quick peek at the blanks. I just finished cutting them all into five and a quarter inch lengths. Uh, there are some like these and some along here that are too short to make five and a quarter inch. So what we're gonna do is cut those to a Sierra length blank. Uh, so I'll have a nice mix of longer blanks and shorter blanks. Any pieces that we do not use, things like this, the little nibs that are too small to even be uh, Sierra blanks, I've got all of the cutoffs that didn't make it, things like this. And what I'm gonna do is go back and we'll just glue those all up and just make, uh, try to make a couple of extra blanks out of all of the leftover pieces. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I really hope you guys don't mind that this is the third time I've attempted this chaos blank. Uh, it, it has just been so much fun. I, the first one I did was just on a whim, just to try some ideas and see if it worked. It worked, it was amazing. Uh, I did a second one because I got an idea to use whole blanks. This time around, I thought, let's use more colors, you know, more exotics. Let's put some laminates in there. It just, you know, the idea just keeps building. And, and I'm hoping you don't get bored with the idea. I'm hoping you find it interesting because I'm taking what I did and I'm building on it to make it even better and more interesting. And that's what I hope you guys do. When you see people like me, all of the folks you follow on the internet, build a blank. You say, wow, that's a cool blank. Don't build the exact same blank. Take that blank, tweak it to your likes and your specifications, and make it even better. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop tonight. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon, and have a great evening.